We're going to look at the trigonometry for triangles that are not necessarily right triangles, and we want to show you that the right triangle is a special case where we delineate the angle gamma to be exactly 90 degrees when those formulas come into play, and we want to show you that they extract readily from the general formulas for a triangle that you know from high school geometry. And this is going to allow us to extract two laws, one that is used quite frequently and another that's used fairly infrequently, but is worth noting as it does give some verification to the concepts that we've been teaching you. The first one that we want to look at is what is known as the law of cosines. And so we take our standard triangle where the <clears throat> interior angles, the largest angle is labeled angle gamma. And then you have sides A, B, and C, where side C is opposite of the angle gamma. So you can see that right here. All right. Now, the relationship for the Pythagorean relation theorem here, the Pythagorean theorem itself specifically deals with right triangles. The law of cosines is a general form of the Pythagorean theorem for a triangle that does not necessarily have a right angle in it, but nonetheless we can show that the uh, Pythagorean theorem comes out of this when you have a 90 degree angle inside the triangle. And the law of cosines is given by the following formula. Side A squared plus side B squared minus 2 times side A times side B times the cosine of the angle gamma gives you the length of side C, the quantity squared. And so give yourself just a moment to dissect that formula. And that works for a triangle in general. And we do make use of this law a good bit in higher level physics courses. Now, when we take a right triangle as an example here, what we're doing is we're specifying that the angle gamma is exactly 90 degrees. And we want to verify that the law of cosines collapses to the Pythag Pythagorean theorem as soon as we take this into account. Now, by doing this, we substitute in 90 degrees for the value of gamma inside the law of cosines. So we substitute 90 degrees for gamma right here. So we have a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine 90 degrees equals c squared. But the cosine of 90 degrees is exactly 0. And so when I put a factor of zero in right here, this entire term collapses to zero. And by doing so, when I, I see that when, I, when gamma is exactly a 90 degree angle, I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so our general formulation for the trigonometry of a right triangle does indeed hold up under the rules of triangles in general. Now, the second law that I want to mention to you is the law of sines. Now, the law of sines is not commonly used, but periodically it does have some benefit, and so I do want you to be familiar with it. We use our same triangle that we had before, angles alpha, beta, and gamma, and the law of sines relates an angle with the side opposite to it. And what we find is, is that in a triangle, we have three equivalent fractions. As long as I take an angle, or excuse me, take a side and divide it by the sine of the angle opposite to it. So we see here that when we have side A is opposite to angle beta, side B is opposite to angle alpha, and side C is opposite to angle gamma we see here that oh, we have three equivalent relationships. Side A divided by the sine of beta is the, is the same as the side B divided by the sine of alpha is the same as side C divided by the sine of gamma. Now this is interesting because this allows us to verify some of the trigonometry for the right triangles and that's really what I want to confirm for you as we move towards unit vectors. In this particular case here, if gamma is exactly 90 degrees, so angle gamma is 90 degrees, the sine 
of angle gamma is equal to the sine of 90 degrees, which is exactly 1. And if we pair these up here, what we end up with is we end up with two expressions. We end up with A over the sine of beta is equal to, we would have C over sine of gamma, but sine of gamma is 1. So that is equal to C. And then we also have B over the sine of alpha is equal to C. And so what we have here is we have ways of extracting the lengths of the sides if we know the hypotenuse and if we know the internal angle measurements of the right triangle. And by doing that, what that allows us to do is see that the length of side A is equal to your hypotenuse of your right triangle times the sine of the angle beta. And the length of side B is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of angle alpha when you're dealing with your right triangle trigonometry and you derive that structure. So the law of sines, like I said, it has a little bit of utility in application, but its biggest utility is verifying for you the right triangle trigonometry that is going to be so important when we start dealing with unit vectors in one of our upcoming videos.